right, so here's hoping that this stream will stay up. Last night's attempt um, ended in tears. Everybody was crying. I, uh... Basically just gave up and stopped trying to uh, connect. And I was planning on just finishing this last night. And, um... I decided uh, I was too tired. So, I'm going to finish it right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sharpen some pencils and get going. Oh, it's already giving me grief. I don't know what's going on. Is it my upload speed? It might be my upload speed. Well, I'll find out soon. There's a 6B. A 3B. A to B. F. That should be good enough. For my value range. B -b -b golly. Okay. We wrap it up. Hey, Sapphire. How you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm like determined to get this done. If this, if it keeps pooping out on me, I'm just going to stop. It's been a total disaster. Like, uh, the connection has been such a pain recently, but <clears throat> hopefully I'll get past it. Yes, so I'm just doing some final touchy touch up touch ups. How you doing? Doing all right. Yeah, it's it's been pretty rough too. It's been like nonstop. Um, every stream I've had problems for the last like I don't know four or five attempts. So um, here's hoping that we're past all that. There is a uh <coughs> what do I want to pull up? Here it is. Why does it always have to go to the wrong screen? Oh 
we just let me know if uh, the stream cuts out. That's if you're going to be here. Um, because I just I covered up the stream. I should be able to see um, a warning dialogue. Man, by golly. Sure, sure. Hey, Joy. How you doing? I'll be making dinner soon, but I'll let you know if I can. Okay, cool. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that somebody will be here. Joy might stick around for a bit. Basically, uh, if my stream if my stream dies, just to like to let me know. But OBS also should show me a warning dialogue when it stops connect when it disconnects. A little red alert comes up and stuff. So I should be I should be all right. I'll just pay attention. But like, the, yeah, the plan is to just absolutely get this done. Yeah, you were here last night, Joey, when I was like, like it was just a total pain in the butt, huh? I'm good. I'm all right. Deciding that I'm going to stop um, working for work today and just, just do a little bit of personal art. I'm kind of uh, looking forward to moving on to something else. Hey, Underground, man. I struggle with this lead sharpening situation. It's cool, but how do you get it like that? Um, so look at a sharpener called um, the Masterpiece. Is that what it's called? It's KUM, K-U-M, Masterpiece. Um, it's this thing here. I won't, well, actually, I do have one that I, I, can, I need to sharpen because it broke. So let me just show you. So, um, these pencils are also fatter than normal pencils, so this might be a bit of a struggle. I, I actually sharpened this using a uh, um, a drill, a hand drill. I just put the pencil into the, uh, the drill instead of a bit. So you'll see like little indentations where it was grabbed onto it. But anyway, so what you do is, I'm just going to do this right now. Yeah, this thing is, this one's... 
you have to like really crank on this one because this is such a fat pencil so what you, what you do is you have you have two things right one of them is uh, this takes the wood off of the barrel yeah it's cool and it's well made yeah so this one takes the wood off the barrel this one sharpens the tip right so here's I'll show you the I'll show you the process so it's like a three-step process basically and four if you want to get crazy which I might I might get crazy who knows I'm gonna dump my shavings so you'll see uh, there's a stopper right here that blue stopper so once it gets to a certain point no pun intended it will stop here let me Get rid of that. Okay. So that's the first part. And you take that out. <laughs> this is such a pain. I really need to use the drill. So they actually make they actually have a sharpener that they sell special for this thing. Uh but it but the point it comes to looks like uh this. So it comes to a decent tip, but like nowhere near what the coom sharpener does. Anyway, so the the second part um, is this. So this sharpens it to a nice point. This is the, and this is typical of their other. They have other sharpeners that do this also. So like with their other sharpeners, their long point sharpeners, you would basically be done at this step. I'm just dumping the uh, the lead. So right now I have a nice tip. So then um, this is the part three. Then you continue to take the wood off of the barrel to get that um, that lead to go longer. Man, I'm I'm tempted to just like put this down and grab my my drill because like this is this is crazy. I'm it's like warm and humid, so my hands are sticky. Um, I've got I've got a pretty strong grip, but like gripping onto this thing, which is again, this this sharpener is made for a a normal size pencil, and this one is just like this is just cramming in here. See, like it's super tight fit, so I'm fighting that. But um, yeah, the next time I do this, I'm just gonna use my drill. But yeah, I dropped this and it just it snapped the end. Hopefully, it's not broken up inside. Like I am. Uh -huh. Just kidding. So I'm being careful about retrieving that. Put that away. Um, and then the then there's one other thing I do, which is um, I just clean. I just uh, basically clean it up with um, a sanding thing. This guy here. Is I'll have like a really weird tip, and then this just takes it to a nice, uh, smooth gradient, you know, down from thick to thin kind of a thing. Plus, um, the tip of this wasn't exactly super sharp. Sometimes it's sometimes it nails it, sometimes it doesn't. So there's that. And I should actually say there's even a part five. Yeah, there's even a part five. Let me, uh, so I'll wipe the lid off. And then I have this other sharpener, which really gets the tip crazy sharp. So see that tip? It's nice. I have it pretty sharp still. And this is the Geddes sharpener. I have a lot of sharpeners going on, but this one, this one takes it to like a very fine, tip excuse me see how sweat my hands are that's sorry that's gross so there you go that's how you get it to sharpen like that um it's not nice to pencils that are beyond a certain softness i think like a 3b is about as soft as i can sharpen with that sharpener it'll just snap off the four b's and up or maybe i can get the four Blackwing pencils at all? What do you think? Um, I have them. Um, I've had mixed. 
I used to just immediately hate black wing pencils. I still, I do have some. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I were to pull it out and start drawing on this piece, I'm guessing it would drive me crazy. Uh, because they just, they're not meant, I don't think they're meant to play well with other pencils. I might be wrong. It seems like I, it seems like I pulled it out the other day just to like prove people, just to show people what I didn't like about it. And then I think it was great. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I just don't know where, um, I usually have one lying around, but I don't see one. So I'm not going to go look for it. I just want to like finish this sucker up. But anyway, that's the, that's the, uh, basic rundown. I bought some recently to test the hype. I like them a lot, but I don't know if they're worth the, yeah. Well, I got to say, um, if you're talking about an expensive pencil, these guys are like the Rolls Royce. This, this is a, here, let me show you. Um, I bought these in a package that was the full value range. Um, these are the, this is the full value range. Um, it came with some other stuff, but the other stuff I'm not really planning on using. And it was like 150 bucks or something, maybe 130, but I think it was like 150 bucks. This right here, I found after buying that other one this is just a very limited run like a very limited set so it's only six pencils but these six pencils cost 35 dollars so you know do the math they're each worth a certain amount but like the the qual these are the best pencils the karandash and i love that you can just look at them and see which one's harder and softer this is the hardest this is the softest just by the color of the thing uh the only pain is that they're too big for normal sharpeners and um that's it um, typically I use the Tombow mono pencils or the, you know, the Tombow pencils. These are what they look like. Basically, if you look at my little graphics at the bottom of the screen here, these are fashioned after Tombow pencils. They're meant to look like them. So when somebody follows me, you see a Tombow pencil come up. So like these are the Tombows. Um, they're really nice. The Mitsubishi are a kind of a close second to them. These Tombos tend to be my favorite pencils until I rediscovered the Karandash and the Karandash is now number one, then um, Tombow, then Mitsubishi. And the only reason I have Mitsubishi in here is because they have 10 Bs. Um, the Karandash go up to 9B, which is plenty and plenty soft. Mine and my cat is being a total a tang tang pain. See now, because you asked me that question, I have a nice sharpened 2B. No, this is just a B. Oh, that's awesome. I have a B. I have a... Let me see. I have an F. I have a B. Mm, that's, that's almost redundant, but see how close the values are? So this is a little bit harder than the B. It goes F and then H, B, and then B, I believe is what it is. Um, it's like it's like H and then F and then H, B, and then 2B. Or maybe it's between H, B, and 2B. I don't remember. Or B and... I can't remember. Let's see, which is darker. Yeah, so the... Um, the B is darker than the F. Oh yeah, F and then HP. I have to pull out the HP, but I'm not going to worry about it. I love my Mitsubishi 9800 series pencils. They aren't really meant for art, but I think they are just the perfect all-around pencil. The, the Mitsubishi 9800 series, is that what these are? 9800. I get, That's not what this is, is it? Nine, what's the 9800 series? Are they uh, are they wooden pencils? Are they wooden uh, casing?
Look at this artist nerds talking art. You can't even see what I'm doing. I'm zoomed out too far. Um, let's see. Um, hey, X Void. How you doing? X V Void. 9800, 9825, and 9850. The latter two have erasers. The 9850s, I think, are red and are like the prototypical woodshop pencil. Hmm. But they are all the same graphite, and I like it. And like it. Uh, they are easy to blend with. They are low albedo, and they don't, and they aren't too dark. I don't know what albedo means. Good for what I use them for. Very cool. No man, it's super. Uh, it's super important for you to find the tool that works for you. Kind of, you know, right tool for the right job. Doing good, man. Just giving myself headaches in Blender. How are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. What are you doing in Blender? Are you, st are you doing um? Uh, are you doing like hard service stuff? El Albedo is shininess. Oh, rigging this monster I made. Oh, okay, that's cool. For animation, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I actually, um, I support a guy. I only, ha I only support like maybe two people on Patreon and one of them is a guy who does rigging in Blender. He has rigging tutorials. Uh, I'd actually recommend him if you're interested. I can uh, send you a message and if I look him up or whatever. Uh, maybe I can even remember his name. Uh, let me just find him real quick. Uh, I'll pull up. What the? Dude, my screen's all wacky. Okay, let's, let's go to Patreon. Oh, it's level pixel level. He has a bunch of uh, free ones. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Uh, videos. Yeah, level pixel level on YouTube. Um, here you go, bud. Hey, Hancock, how are you, buddy? So, he has a bunch of free stuff on YouTube. And the thing is, I think the only... You're, you're very welcome. The only thing that... um. Oh, yeah, it's so good, man. Like, he does some super fun stuff. Um, I've done... I've done some actually really good stuff in Blender because of this guy. Um... He uh he's just he just nerds out about stuff. I think he's pretty young. He's probably like in his early twenties or something. Um, he might even be younger than that. But he's just an absolute nerd for uh, rigging and rendering. Model rig, animate, render, sleep, repeat. 
yeah. So uh, definitely worth checking them out. Um, and I think that I think that the Patreon, the only thing that's different about Patreon versus um, his YouTube stuff, is you get early access, and I think you get um, access to his working files or something. And you absolutely don't need either of those to get the full experience just by what, like going through his tutorials. Um, I actually, what, I, what I'll do is I'll watch his tutorials and I'll build something that looks like his stuff. You're learning Blender? Yeah, Blender's pretty awesome. Um, I can't, Nimlock can't be in here when I say that kind of thing. But I mean, it's, it's, it's not an industry standard. Uh, there are a lot of people, like I'm not, I'm not like a Blender preacher, but for free, uh, like anything the enthusiast wants to do, pretty much you can do in Blender. Um, it's not ZBrush, but it, you can do a lot of really convincing stuff. You can you can do something in Blender, tell people you did it in ZBrush, and they will believe you. Like Blender can pull it off, you know, uh, to a point. I would love to see your 3D stuff. Is it posted up somewhere? Um, I have some... Here, let me... I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link real quick. I have some old stuff on an old blog. Uh, I'll, there's only a few images that are still showing on this old blog, um, but some of them are um, 3D. <laughs> do you remember do you remember the um sculptress get out of here i have to keep showing my cat away do you remember so the, let me show you an old old one really quick this is an old sculptress one i did uh and like it and sculptress is so much better now um and then uh, I will find my others on Instagram. I have to go to I have to go through the, like some old posts to find some of my three D stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Um, but I have a lot of stuff I do in Blender that I have not posted anywhere. Um, basically, what I'll, the only thing I'm going to be able to show you right now is ZBrush stuff, unless I upload something or screen share my Blender files. Um, a lot of my Blender files are work-related, so uh, I can't show that, obviously. Um, I'm seeing some old 3D stuff. Basically, um, the stuff on my Instagram is like truly old, like when I first started learning ZBrush kind of stuff. Mm. Oh, here's some old sculpture, sculpture stuff too. Uh, copy link address. So here's a couple. There's a sculptress one. Oh, you found one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You found okay. So you're you're in my yeah. That one. Um, I need to go back and 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 work on that one. That one's actually something I I'm pretty happy with. So there's that guy, and then and then if you if you're looking back that far, you'll also see some ZBrush ones that are animated, and I've gotten much better since then. But uh, yeah, I've done some. I've done some. Uh, um, some 3D modeling stuff. I actually have some animations that I'm really happy with. And also, everything um, at the bottom, those pencils that are down here, at the bottom of the screen, those are all uh, Blender created pencils. And so, like, you know, these, um, you know, let me, I'll show you the, I'll, I'll show you the alerts that I have. These are all just quick, these are easily done in Blender. Let me show you, uh, Here's the follow animation. That that's a 
the blender thing and all I do is I change the um, I change a couple of th parameters and I have a different pencil so that one is a blender a blender render and then here's a donation one see how it's sharpening I actually figured that out on my own. Oh man, that's loud. Sorry, guys. This is a test donation for sixty-eight dollars. Sixty-eight dollars. So those are all uh, those are all on a Blender file. I actually want to do more. I want to do one for uh, hosts and for raids. I actually have files set up. I haven't actually been in here forever and under a different name. What was the vodka you did the label for? Oh, it doesn't even exist anymore, but um, it was Grumpy's Vodka. Um, it's still, I think, linked on my website. Um, let me see. Make me art. Uh, artwork. Mm, I actually might have gotten rid of my blog. Um, is it news? Yeah, news. No, it's not news. Oh yeah, here it is. Hey, Emmy! Oh my gosh. Hello, Emmy. How are you? How was your stream? Were you drawing? Were you gaming? Bananu, thanks for the follow. Hello. See, Emmy knows me as the Phoebe. Emmy's known me for a long time online. I've never met in IRL, at least I'm to my knowledge. Did we ever meet at a convention or anything? I don't think we did. Emmy Reed. Yeah, so I was actually just telling these guys that I make these animations uh, for for like when somebody donates or something. Like, I mean, you know, and I'm going to make one for when people raid me like that and for when they uh, host me. So here's a follow one that I did. And then the subscription one looks like this. I was just showing these guys. And then when, uh, and then when I, um, what the, hey, somebody followed me. See, little ghost, little ghostily. Thanks for the follow. And here's a donation one. This is a test donation for fifty-six dollars. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them for uh, I'm gonna make them for uh, for raids and stuffs. You are forever Feeb. <laughs> Thanks, Emmy. No, I really enjoy doing that stuff, and I actually do have some Blender files in progress that are gonna be for raids and. Uh, here, let me just show you. Maybe I'll just... Nah, it'll be too boggy. Actually, do you guys want to see a preview of it? Let me get the file open, and maybe I can show you a preview of it. It's called Butchered? Yeah, it's called... Oh, that's not it. Huh. Doesn't seem to want to play nice. Uh, file open. Don't save. Yeah, raid 3A. Okay, I'm going to... Oops. So it, you you look at the bottom of my screen, you'll see like a bottom bar, which is kind of a pencil um, that's behind the pencils. Uh, I'm going to move OBS to another monitor so that when I share it, it doesn't look uh, crazy. Okay. Um, gaming? That's not right. Um, main, this is not it, but I'm going to, I'm going to switch my, um, there we go. 
So um, this is my Blender file that I, I'm working on that I was thinking about having for raids. So see how it looks like a rocket ship? Oh, you're leaving? Uh, Ray, thank you for hanging out for a second. Um, so this is the this is the animation that I was planning. Come on. Let's go to the beginning. So it comes in like a rocket. And it comes in and like it sets down with turbulence. It lands, and and then um, a bunch of little. I, I'm thinking like spaceships. I mean, either either more pencils come out, or uh, whatever. I might have an effect, or I might just go like you know like, or just leave it where it is, and I go like this. Like that, and then uh, and then like something stupid. Anyway, so that's one of my um that's one of my files that I have going. Sorry for uh making the ridiculous noise here. And I need to change the lighting as well. Uh whoops. So anyway. Yeah, it's super fun. So I've been I've been messing with that. I like the uh the little turbulence as it sits down. Zzz and then actually if if you notice one of the things i didn't realize is that like he actually sits down over the f the the pencil that is the the foreground like framing element um so i'll probably have to adjust for that like i'll move everything back a bit i think i can just i think i can just select the whole animation and actually move it on the like y axis or whatever it is so uh, anyway, so that's my show and tell for for that. So I do have plans for raids. So that's a little preview. So next time Emmy, not the next time, but like another time when Emmy um, raids me, it'll have a completely new animation with uh, sound. Copyright free sound. Non sarcastic. <laughs> it is a space pencil. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Perfect sound effects. I'm going to get it down. Actually, I did a... I, I, I watched an old Patreon... No, I'm sorry, an old Gumroad video that I did like a million years ago where I, I teach us uh, one of my methods of drawing. Um, and I'm still so pleased with it. And, and like the... Uh, the effects are all <laughs> are all me just doing mouth stuff. It's an intro anime. It's an intro uh, movie where. Uh, shit, I should just show you guys. Show and tell time, man. What can you say? Let me show you. Let me show you this. I don't see why not. Okay, moving over here. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this. You guys don't have a choice. Dropping so many gifts on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here we go again. This is my gum road. I don't even have a freaking. There's a couple things I have to change in this. One of them is that like no, Mike's Pencil dot com no longer exists. I actually let it lapse, and then somebody else bought it. And now uh, I don't even. I think I don't know if the guy sells pencils. I forget. Like, but it's kind of silly. So here is my video. I'm gonna pause the um, the music so that you can hear this. Um, let's see here. Does it get bigger? I'm going to try and make it larger. Oh, it does. Oh, people are sitting on fireworks outside. Okay, here we go. Let me know if you can't hear it. Did it? 
Uh, this is my how-to video. It's not on video production. It's on doing artwork and making yourself look really, really good on camera in an unpacked but finished basement. So this should totally inform you on how to be a better artist using proper methods instead of the wrong ones that you've probably been using your whole life. So that's my promo video. I need to fix it a little bit, but um, I still really enjoy watching it. <laughs> uh, oops, wrong, wrong uh, one. So yeah, thanks for thanks for letting me do the show and tell. I'm super proud of that stupid video. Uh, I need to. I really do need to. Uh, to fix that intro because that intro i think i could uh i could tweak and it could just be like a a twitch uh introduction like you know when people come to your website to your twitch channel and uh you're not there they can see that video play uh i think i could tweak that pretty easily and make it <laughs> tis a silly place i seem to recall at some point you having dyed your beard yeah oh my gosh you've been you've been around forever underground man yeah uh glitter beard yeah i it, it was at 1000 uh subs i'm sorry 1000 follows 1000 subs i wish uh i've got quite a few follow uh followers now i think i've got something like uh over 6k or 8k or something like that not too bad but uh yeah, that was that was at one thousand. Benu, thank you for hanging out later. <laughs> I totally want to do that. Like, I need to. I need to finish the. Uh... And then we got legit. And obviously, like that didn't that didn't make any money because I just don't. It, it doesn't have it doesn't have an image on it uh so there's no preview of the video it's just a black screen so that's another pro fail um i'm trying to get the screen to be smaller again there we go and then i'm um, closing that and then i'm moving obs to another window and then i get back to drawing man i am the king of freaking uh random like distractions I'm almost done I'm getting my uh, inspiration image up and then I'm I'm getting back to this okay I'm done all right I got my glasses back man it's starting to roast in here Uh, what you're working on reminds me a lot of a really, really pretty video game from the 2000s called Machinarium. Oh, I own that game. That's awesome. I can I can see the similarity. Uh, I definitely um, uh, gravitate towards that sort of vibe. I think that like it's the vibe more than anything that's probably reminding you of it. Um, when I saw that game, I'm like, I really wish I could have worked on this. I would have had so much fun. But um, they did a good job. They did a great job. I think I have like uh, Machinarium 2 as well. My daughter actually rocks that game. She like she sat down and actually figured it all out. I super love the uh, the vibe of that game. It's it's also just silly fun, but haunting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you remember the? I need to play it. Actually, I should play it on stream. 
Um, do you remember the the old man that's like in the forest or whatever? He is so cool. Like I don't normally care about stuff like that, but he was amazing. So he was he was in my opinion, so much better than the Ent in Lord of the Rings. Uh, not to make anybody mad, but I was super disappointed with the Ent from the Lord of the Rings because I actually did a drawing of an Ent uh, from how uh, I imagined it when I read Lord of the Rings. And um, I didn't do a good job, but when I saw the... Uh, when I saw what they, like Peter Jackson had done, I was like, oh man, really? Now people can't unsee that. I actually did the... Uh, I did some some drawings of Lord of the Rings stuff in anticipation of the movie coming out so that I wouldn't I wouldn't see the movie and then forever have my image of something changed you know not have that control over it so it's kind of like Star Wars um like some of my buddies and I when they announced the 1 2 and 3 you know long a long long time ago <laughs> in a galaxy far far away uh, there, we we actually did concepts of different Jedi races, and we came up with some really good ones. I thought, uh, and then when the movie came out, you're like, really? <laughs> My favorite. Oh, that's a uh... cool. All right, so you guys are just like just checking out the what's it called? I'm so sorry. A Biani. Not the musician. The artist formerly known as Yanni. I've got to like, I got to put a fork in this sometime soon, man. I really, I really could like whittle at this thing forever. Well, not forever, but you know, for way, way longer than I should. Um, I'm really happy with a lot of it. And I do think that I could benefit from um, continuing to tweak several areas, but I could also overwork it. <laughs> Believe it or not, this could be overworked. Hey, thanks, Painting. Thanks for the follow, too. Much appreciated. Welcome to my channel. Boom, boom. You missed the show and tell, but... <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta clear my throat. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my... I think it's because, like, I've been so lethargic lately. No way! Freaking went right to the sub. Holy crap, thank you so much. Welcome to the family. Welcome, welcome. Um, honored. Good to have you. I think that's only happened like once ever before where somebody I actually had one person sub before they followed me, I think once, which is hilarious. It was something like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, I really appreciate it. I think it's awesome of you. I've decided that I don't, I don't want to sing along with songs too much. <laughs> I think there's a lot of streamers out there who just kind of get into it, and it's kind of nice, and it's kind of not nice. Because sometimes I just want to hear the music or the conversation, but not, 
want the music and a dude singing along with it. Uh, you get somebody like Water. Oh my gosh. She has like an incredible voice. So if she sings along with something, she's only going to make it better. <clears throat> Jelly, thank you. You're sh yeah, I was basically I was showing so you, the animations that just came up painting uh, when you when you followed me and then when you subscribed with the pencils and then like if you see you know the pencils that are down here um, I just I was showing people um, stuff that I've done in 3d <clears throat> I'm sorry <clears throat> and then I was showing them uh, an animate like a, an introduction video that I made for um, an art tutorial that I put up on Gumroad a long time ago just to crap come up and it totally worked I almost said crap them up that would have been bad so I cracked, I, I was just, uh, I really enjoy this old intro video, and I have to edit it so that it can be kind of the welcome video for people who stop in and see me. Hey, Jelly Kuzo, thanks for the fall. See, I did that little animation there. This whole thing dark back here, I think. Actually, it already looks better. It looks like this, it's a continuation of this little shape here, which wasn't on purpose, but it looks on purpose now. And I'm really glad that <laughs> I probably, when I first laid the drawing out, it probably meant for that to be a continuation, but that was its own little object. So that worked out. Um, those are pretty sweet. I love how they're not super in your face. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I actually, when I get raided, um, there was an there was one that was super in your face, and when I get, um, it, it's still kind of jarring when somebody raids or when somebody um, hosts. So I was that's another one of the show and tells. I was showing um, a raid animation that I have um, in the works. That's kind of where it started, actually. This is just from your brain, or do you have a reference you're using? Um, both, Jelly. I I have um, when I when I uh, when I started, it was a tea stain drawing. Here, let me I'll show you guys because there's enough new people in here that um, this should be uh, useful. I have to go back in my. Okay, so here's where it started. It was a tea stain. And then um, you're going to see an insect on my back uh, sliding door that I thought was cool. But um, so that's you can see where all the shapes came from. I, you know, I made myself some uh, cream of Earl Grey, took the tea bag out, plopped it on this page and uh, just kind of moved it around a little bit and then just took it off. So, um, here's the insect. He's pretty cool looking, actually. Look at that guy. He's, like, tiny, too. He was, like, super tiny. So, yeah, I just started kind of going at it. Um, so, partially, um, I just, I found shapes in there. Like, um, you know, I could see that face in there. So, that was kind of an easy establishment. Um, I don't even know if you can tell that there's a face there, but there's a face. Um, and then, um, I, I went on to, uh, Pinterest 
and I have like uh, I have a Pinterest page on um, what's the word um, I like native peeps to like uh, like is that not, it's not I'm not using the word native uh, but it was it was something like tribal that's what it is I had a I have a I have a tribal um, section and so there were people who had things that they were wearing as like you know like a horn or whatever so it was just inspiration from that and then um, a lot of the stuff is just sort of things that are in my my wheelhouse my my um, habitual rendering you know topics or whatever so like I didn't use any reference for the leather but you can kind of tell that I didn't use any reference uh, so I yeah like I know I can draw rivets I've drawn I've drawn lots of rivets so I have that down but the um, these these things here uh, that was definitely uh, lifted from an existing photograph or at least there were there were elements of a photograph that I really liked and I, I, I took some of it and added it to this in my own design kind of a thing uh, oh there's a stuff that I was looking at so that's it um, and then um, I actually do have one more um, progress piece but it's basically what you're looking at um, it look it was base it was basically done I'm almost there I'm scrolling through a bunch of images um, so it was basically done but you know this one I had just started adding detail like this swirly stuff in here so if you look at these strands up here you can look at this and tell that there's there's way more detail in there now not way more but you know there's more detail so there's like you know all I'm doing right now is just this additional stuff like see this belt right here um, I I added a you know just a, a texture to it oops you know it's just stuff like that I'm just adding more I'm just adding another level of detail on a final pass sort of thing yeah and the top part of this hose thing here is now like it's got tons of texture so the plan was to just use what was there and then just kind of uh, tighten up all of the rendering so that everything works cohesively and now um, I've I've just used it as I, I'm still going down the rabbit hole of adding detail which is insane uh, Aboriginal it's not Aboriginal but it definitely uh, has that feel like um, I have a um, a drawn I did a drawing of an African mask that I have I have incorporated into so much of my stuff ever since, and he is he is another um, variation from from that. Um, I'll have to, I would show you right now, but I really need to finish this stupid thing. Uh, I love that so much. I mean, walking us through your process, but the drawing too. Uh, is this just for you or for project? It's just for me painting. Thanks for. Uh, Thanks for being so uh, supportive of the whole like background blatherings. Um, I really, really, uh, yeah, enjoy that process. You know, it's definitely my zen. Um, I do artwork for a living, um, but it's very much um, here's the assignment, here's a description of it, go. You know, and so when I in my element um, I'm much happier doing this sort of thing where I'm the boss of where it goes and um, so I'm responsible for any mistakes obviously but uh, I get to really explore and you know no penalties When it's done, it means something to me that's very personal, you know. Like I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of randomness in here, and there's a lot of like personal um, meaning in here too. 
I think maybe there's some personal meaning here that's subconscious, and there's definitely some that is not subconscious. Uh, but I think that's important. I really like doing that sort of thing. But the Machinarium uh, call-out, that 100% that is my vibe. Or I don't know about 100%, but pretty dang close. Hey... The Skalos Tear, thanks for the follow. Or Tear. That's... Thank you. There's a buckle in there. I told I just found a little buckle. Hidden away. Hey, Abu Sineo. Thanks for the follow. Ab abuse. Abuse Neo. Abuse Neo. Ab abuse Neo. Abuse Neo. I'm guessing it's Abuse Neo. Thanks for the follow, buddy. Uh, there. I lost my place. Omega, thanks for the follow.
singing. No. I love seeing artists process. I find them super interesting and insightful. Yeah, yeah. No, me too. A hundred percent. I I love watching um, people draw because like they're not going to approach it the same way you do. For real. So like, I can watch artists draw all day. Sometimes I cringe. I'm like, come on, dude. Do that. Why'd you do that? Just kidding. I don't judge. Actually, sometimes I'll uh, I'll ruin something um, in a drawing. Like I'll have a I'll have something that had a really nice feature or potential, and then I'll make a mistake, and then I'll <laughs> if I'll I'll rewatch it once in a while, and I'm like I'll cringe like knowing it's coming up. I'm like, dude, just don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But I know that I did it. It's gonna happen. Uh, feels like co-working and helps me get work done too. That's nice. You don't have to tell everyone you cringe at my art. <laughs> nope, dig, I do not cringe at your art. I love your art. Yeah, I can watch people do art that I enjoy over and over again. I also find it inspirational, even if it's a different medium or one that I suck at. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, you watch you watch somebody do something in a medium that you suck at. You watch them do it enough and it's your brain's going to go, "Oh, I get it now." You know. And uh I know because I was able to do it and uh I don't have I have an analytical brain. Um for art, don't get me wrong, but like, it's, it's taken me a long time to get it to a point where I can actually understand some things. Like, I would watch an, an oil painter paint, choose colors, and I would be like, completely overwhelmed, uh, daunted by the knowledge that goes into their choices of color. And now, like, it's been simplified for me. It's and now I watch it and it's like, oh god, that's so easy. And now I I can understand a lot of things that people are doing that I haven't done before, uh, because I have some deeper understanding of fundamentals. Uh, I was so daunted by oil painting, just I I you know I became a drafts a decent draftsman from years of practice, uh, but I. So I, I got really good at that, but then colors were still uh, a complete Achilles heel to me. And um, I I struggled with it. Um, I was terrible at it. Everything I did would be mud. And then I just finally, working digitally actually helped me out a lot. I, I, you know, you layer colors over each other and you can see how they produce another color. Uh, so I got over my fear of color working digitally because you don't have to worry about making mistakes. And then, um, I watched a couple of oil painting videos and one guy just made it really simple. He, he, he 
he broke down how you ch how you uh, make uh, how you approach value and color um, by uh, just all you do is you look at something and you you try you 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 paint a color and then you just and then you you look at your reference and you go is it is it lighter or darker than this darker fine is it is it warmer or cooler so if you just work with your warms and cools and your darks and lights you can nail it i remember the f after watching him do that i mixed some paints and then i got the paint to where it was it was a uh, i did i did a drawing on cardboard and i made a mistake that i hated and i mixed some paints together Hey, cream upon. Thanks for the follow, bud. Um, I mix some oil, some colors together, to to match the color of the cardboard. That you know, it was a specific color of cardboard, and I did that value thing and the warm thing, and then I I painted over this mistake I'd made, and the mistake just went right away. I perfectly matched the cardboard. And it was such a freaking thrill to me. Oh my god, I'm like, I did it, you know. And then uh, after that, like, it's been pretty straightforward. I have three pencil shaded illustrations in my sketchbook watching you, from watching you. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I see, I see on your Instagram that you miss your Hong Kong fui days. You're my hero. I used to love Hong Kong fui. Yeah, right, dude. Hong Kong Fooey, number one super guy. Hong Kong Fooey. Faster than the human eye. Chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, and a bow, wow, wow. Van Riffick. Freaking loved that show. Wasn't that like, wasn't the voice of it like Scatman Crothers or something? Hong Kong Fooey. Hong Kong Fooey, number one super guy. <laughs> number one super guy. Hong Kong Fooey, faster than the human eye. Chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, chicka, chunk, and a bow, wow, wow. Mark's a lot. How you doing, buddy? How you been? And thank you. Uh,. Dude, I'm so close. I'm I keep going to really unimportant areas and fiddling with them, and I just need to finish up the uh, the parts that need finishing. So hopefully, let me ho hopefully I can uh, do that right now. I'm so like distracted. I think it's actually a healthy thing to like jump around uh, the page though. It keeps it, it not just keeps it it doesn't just keep things interesting. It also um, keeps your brain entertained I mean but it also helps you really um, make everything cohesive working together that sort of a thing so when you when you look at something and it stands out that's the part you need to attack and fix um, there are parts here that just um, need to be finished it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be detailed but um, it needs to uh, look like it's finished well it doesn't need to i mean like i could stop and i'm sure nobody nobody throw a tantrum about it looking unfinished but like this looks like it needs a little bit of love and so does this but that just means we're really close because i'm pointing out two little tiny areas Then I can go back and do crazy, uh... Dude! Painting! Dig, you got a freaking gifted sub, brother! <clears throat> Thanks for the memory! <laughs> Dude, yeah, I love Hong Kong Fui so much. Painting, thank you again so much. That was awesome of you. Get me going back to these old spots again.
Oh, painting. Like, let me show you some of the other stuff I have in this book. I think you can... Uh, wacky Race. Had to look at Wacky Races. Oh, you guys are talking about cartoons, right? Hey, Don Lee. How you doing? When I think Hong Kong Fu, I always think of other Hanna-Barbera stuff like Mutt Lee and that race series that had a ton of characters. Oh, are you talking about um, Speed Racer? Wacky Races? Is that what it is? <clears throat> oh, okay. No, Speed Racer... What's the what's the uh what's the the dune the dune buggy that like had the lisp? It was like like you would talk like that. Was that it? The wacky racers, whatever. Too lazy to Google. Speed buggy. That's it. Speed buggy. Speed buggy. And there was like a dude that looked kind of like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Raggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Scoob. Dude, the cat will not shut up. Hey, Mena, uh, Mena Haiti, uh, Mena Hattie, Mena Hattie, thank you for the follow, bud. Welcome. Getting a lot of follows tonight. That's awesome. Now, I worked on this last night for a while, and um, I had like two people in here for the longest time. It's kind of awesome that like uh, we got we got forty five people in here now. That's what it's telling me. That's freaking cool. It was cool when I had a few people too, but whatever. It's really cool now. I don't want to put my sweaty hands on the freaking paper. I'm trying to avoid that. But there are areas like right here that I'm having to shade that are hard for me not to rest my hand on. I don't I have a friend who like preaches floating your hand all the time. Float your hand, float your hand. I get it, but like I need some stability sometimes, like hardcore. So I need to anchor my hand. Have you put any sketchbooks or art books? Your impressions are on point. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I did make a publication of one of my of a, a compilation of my sketches and those are all pretty much gone they were it's from a long time ago too i have like i think maybe three copies left maybe four and uh that are here in the house is that what you mean yeah that's that's all i've done I would have been here on last here last night, but there was a live disc golf podcast <laughs> I was watching. Uh huh. I totally understand, Dick. I mean, geez. If I would have known it was on, I would have not streamed. I would have gone and watched that. Plus, uh, last night's stream was a total horror show in terms of uh, connectivity. It was it was down about as much as it was up, and um, I just gave up after a while. At the end there, I just couldn't I couldn't connect and and be on for more than like you know five ten seconds. It was super bad, and so I just stopped. Plus, it was really late, so stopping was a good choice at the time. I think I'm really close to being done, uh, at least with um. I'm saying that now, but you know, at least with these these untouched areas.
all this comes down to is like <clears throat> is just drawing a little I have a friend Howard that like uh he kind of took away my intimidate like the uh, intimidation factor for me of hyper detailed like illustration he does these very complex illustrations <clears throat> tons of elements going on in them right and he's he said all I do is like he goes I just really love uh, drawing a little thing like he'll have like a little a little something sitting on a desk and then he'll go in there and he'll and he'll he'll work on it and then as soon as he's done you know he, he just gets all excited and he works on it and as soon as he's done he just moves on to another thing and he like he geeks out on that and so that that's definitely a big part of how I I work is that like I'll just I'll find some ridiculously weird little uh, part and then I'll just sort of geek out on it and once I get it to a happy place I'll move on and eventually come back to it but like I'll move on and you know kind of prove out another goofy little something you know so it it removes that daunting aspect uh, it it was a big it was kind of a big breakthrough for me I was already doing kind of detailed stuff but it was like I was intimidated by scenes you know with a bunch of objects in it if I look in this and in, in terms of like an like objects like it looks like he's got like 50 objects like on him you know if you like break it down <clears throat> I heard the heat has caused brownouts that have been playing merry hells with people's internet connection. Yeah, and, I, and the storms out here too. There's tropical storms that are out. I, I'm so happy that like you guys haven't reported any issues on the stream tonight. Um, last night was a mess, huh, Gobble? Hello, by the way, Gobble Porch. Feel a similar way about stippling. My friend loves stippling, and it looks like running a marathon. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I've actually, uh, I've done one stippling that I'm. I think I might have finally thrown it out. I think I did. It was of Jackie Gleason. Uh, I did it in college, and it's. I was so proud of it that I've I've been holding on to it ever since. And I never wanted to do another stippling after Jackie Gleason. I remember like really wanting to do it because I thought stippling looked so freaking cool. And then I did it, and I'm like, I did it. I don't need to do it anymore. I've basically it it proved to me that I was not into stippling, <laughs> like, but that I can stipple. I think anybody who can shade, for the most part, I mean, like, people have limitations. Um, physically but like if you can shade uh, namely um, if you have a good sense of volume and whatever you, you can cross hatch it you can shade it you can stipple it you can do a bunch of patterns you know it's the same thing like all you're doing is making it darker or lighter stippling is just the same thing you're just dot 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 I gotta go to sleep, but I'm super glad we wound up here. Really happy to be following. Thank you for sharing so much. Little Ghosts, thanks for hanging out. Little Ghost Ali. Um, good night. Sleep well. Oh, it's 10, 12 here, too. I had some issues with the stream. At one point, it sounded like beatboxing. <laughs> hey, at least it had the, in the intended effect.
<laughs> you had you, you love the beatboxing video for the for my information. Thanks a lot, buddy. Do you work a lot faster when it's professional, but chill out and just take your time when you're doing personal works? Gobble, I was actually just thinking about that. That's funny that you mentioned that. I was just thinking about how like um, I'm into this really complex thing, and my brain is happy and relaxed, and I have like a really a really simple assignment at work. Sometimes simple is not as fun or as simple as you might think. But I have I have an assignment for work that I have to do that is I and I, I have an idea of how to do it, but it's it's like uh and it's even like playing with designs and things. You know, not unlike some of the stuff I have going here. But it's like I just have to make it work and that's done and and so it's more daunting sometimes so sometimes it goes fast sometimes it doesn't sometimes I'll have blockers in something that should be very simple and then other times I can completely plow through stuff at work or at home that is actually quite complicated I'll do something in an hour that people could be convinced it took me a couple days to do you know but I can uh, like today I feel like I showed work that um, looked phoned in or something because it just um, I'd struggled with it more than uh, usual stuff you know um, but it ebbs and flows you know I, I try to be um, consistent you know, if I'm struggling, um, what I have to do is just plow through it and make it work. And sometimes where I'm just like on fire, uh, all the better, you know, like it's awesome. Work hard, relax and play hard. Like right now, I feel like, um, I've got to dig deep to like come up with something for for concept review tomorrow that um, is on par with what I've done before and with what the other guys are working on. Um, and the mannerism of your pencil strokes looked very cozy. Yeah, looks. Uh, thanks for the response, my guy. You bet, buddy. Always. Resume, resume in a bit. Um, as much for me as for you guys. Um, I'm trying to make um, a good decision on a little area here, and the camera helps me 
envision it a bit better than actually looking at it from real life. I want to make these dark little thready things, but I don't want it to look like um, holes. I think I did it. I think I pulled it off. Heat touching the paper, but I got it. I'm in a tiny little finicky spot. Doing a little. I'm just imagining this little spot as like being some corroded little piece of metal. I don't have to go nuts on it, just enough to like, you know, as long as I put in some information there, it's going to look right. You know, if I put some thought into it, you don't even have to look at it and understand what's going on. It's just going to look right. Hey, De Niro, how you doing? It's good to see you again. Been a while. Uh, hey, 9065D. Thanks for the follow. Bling, 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 bling. I still wear those shirts. Oh, hey, Dino. Thanks, buddy. Which shirts? Um, which shirt do you have? Do you have the, uh, the Eclipse one? I've only made so many shirts, so if you're talking about one I did... Sorry, my brain, dude. There's the subscription song. As you can see, I'm stealing from these songs, but they're from my, uh, I paid for that art list. The solar eclipses. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You, so you, you wear one of those? Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, I forget where where those went. Sorry, I have the worst memory. I just remember that I just remember that like I lost so much money on that uh, uh, project, but whatever. I learned. I also overcame like a fear of um, going out and pedaling.
it have got to be almost done. Hey, uh, monosyllable, monosyllable, monosyllabic monk. Monosyllabic. Is there a different way you pronounce that? Monosyllabic monk. How you doing? That's a very non-monosyllabic. Syl I want to say monosyllabic. Mono. Oh my god. Monostillabic. Monostillabic. <laughs> Thank you. How many years have you been drawing? Oh, uh, I mean, since I was a kid, so, you know, my whole life, years, uh, I decided I was going to be an artist in the fourth grade because of something my teacher said. Uh, that's when I started to really attack it. So if I were eight years old, we're talking 40, uh, how many years? 44 years? 44 years? Hey, Wolf. How you doing, bud? So, yeah. Not a short period of time. <laughs> I've been drawing a while. Let me continue this thing. You can call me monk. Monosyllabic. Yeah, long time, Hancock. Long time. I actually uh, wish I'd drawn more during that amount of time. I have gone full years without really producing any art. Um, Uh, I, I lost so much happiness, like, during the whole political freaking ridiculous destruction that happened, you know, recently. At least, you know, it feels like that. It, it felt like that. Relationships uh, that meant a lot to me were kind of forever uh, ruined, or at least heavily damaged so uh, yeah that was rough I mean I have thick skin don't get me wrong but like when it's your parents or when it's your siblings and it's your your best friends you know it kind of takes a toll and it 
absolutely um, took a toll on my creativity. I just didn't care. I mean, I, I did care, but I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. I would sit there and try and pretty much fail, and so I just play video games or something. Uh, I literally, the last, I've done a couple of neat little drawings through all that time, but like, I've also uh, not done a really good piece for a long time. Like something I'm really happy with. Oh, man. Getting pretty close. Hey, Trash Rama. Thanks for the follow, buddy. Welcome. said I wouldn't sing along with songs, then we went right back into singing the songs. You big fat liar. Dumb question. Oh, wait. Um, you mean this amazing piece doesn't fulfill you with pride? No, no. This piece, I'm super happy with. I'm really happy with it, buddy. Or Joy? You know, this one I absolutely... I'm totally into. I'm saying that, like, for a long time it didn't happen. Uh, that's all. Dumb question. Did you ever do art for Arkham Horror? Yeah. I could have sworn I'd seen this art style before. No, not Arkham Horror. No, I did. Um, I did stuff for Call of Cthulhu. Um, is that, isn't that Arkham Horror? Is that the tabletop and card game? Um, anyway, Arkham Horror. Is that right? Yeah, I've done, yeah, I've done artwork for them. Yep. Good eye. Holy crap. Um, <laughs> fun story, Trashorama. I was actually, I was at my buddy, uh, my buddy Tim's house, and we were, and he wanted me to play a board game. Hey, Atari Jinx, thanks for the follow. So we were playing the Call of Cthulhu board game, and um, the I had my little player card. You know, it was, it was like on a little plastic uh, holder, and it had like a little dude holding a gun or something. And I was like staring at it. I'm like, this looks really familiar. And I'm just like, I, you know, and I just keep playing the game, and I, I keep looking back at it. I'm like, dude, this looks really familiar. I'm like... It kind of looks like something I did. <laughs> it's a, I like I started I, I started looking around the game board, and it turns out that there were four things on that game that I had done art for. I I had done the art. It was hilarious. Uh, so I did I did artwork for their card game, and they reused my art for their board game. 
Hey, uh, Nekaji. Nekaji. Yeah, it was spooky. So, yeah, one of the haunted houses um, I did. It might have been a couple of them. Uh, it, there's like a there's like a Cthulhu compendium book where it has art from all over the place and they only have one piece of mine in there and it's a crappy card that I did but whatever it was called the blessing of Cthulhu and it was a guy who had worms growing out of his face I actually have those cards every once in a while I uh, um, I've, I discover them they're in a tiny little manila envelope because they're you know they're like an inch by two and a half inches or something they're small little things you know me I draw small so but the art was all digital it's nice when you have worms growing out of your face because hey free worms right <laughs> yeah that's right you don't have to go looking for them either yeah they're right there Gobble, man. Okay, this might make some of you guys upset, so hey, hold on. Um, so, I used to, um, as as sort of a, uh, to gross out my sisters or something, I, I would eat earthworms. I would just, I would just drop them, swallow them whole. And my, uh, my sister-in-law, I remember that, like, uh, I was I was over I was over visiting my brother and my sister-in-law with her kid. Like he discovered all these worms and she's like, she's like, look at these worms and he's like, and I remember like saying something about how I'm gonna eat it. And like, isn't that crazy, Miles? He's gonna eat it. He's gonna eat the earthworm. Are you know? And, and, and so like she was building this whole thing up and I thought that she knew that I was literally gonna do it. And so when I did it, she about like, she about fainted. She was so grossed out. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe you actually did that. She was freaking out that I did that. <clears throat> I'm like, you, you told them that I was going to do it. Like, you know, I thought, you know, and she's like, I was joking. I thought we were joking. I can't believe you actually did it. Anyway. Either that was the last time or I only did it like once ever after that. So don't worry, I don't eat earthworms anymore. And that was that was back when I was still in my twenties. I don't remember where it started, but it was like I think a friend of mine did it to gross me out or something, and I'm just like, whatever, dude, and I just did it. And it was he's like, Yeah, it's not bad. You just drop it in there. Sorry if I'm grossing anybody out. I'll stop now. You can get parasites from eating earthworms, so please retire from your carny work. Okay. <laughs> it probably expa explains a lot of what's going on in my freaking gut biome, right? Okay, let me... A little detail up here, and then I have to, I'm going to assess it and then just stop fiddling on it. And I'm just going to like try and call it done. I'm going to try and um, only do things that uh, benefit the piece as a whole instead of just continually fiddling. So, but obviously I can go in here and I can detail out even more stuff and there's just it, it at some point it's just like okay dude you made your point you can stop now hey Kasi Draws I think I follow you Kasi Draws Delbert Stinkfester. Fester. Stinkfester. Del Delbert. Delbert. I had a I had a foster brother named Delbert. 
Native American dude. Delbert. Uh, Joker Poof. Thanks for the follow. Ooh, Joker Poof 2. Oh, I thought it said 2B. It's 2828. Uh, now all your weird drawings make sense. Earthworm diet. Yeah, right? Um, actually, let me wrangle this spot here. I can get away with adding some detail to this because um, it it looks like it's fuzzy here instead of a defined um, separation. Define separation of surfaces and materials. I'm trying to make myself stop, guys. <laughs> you guys that just showed up. That's what the topic is right now. Mike, stop drawing. But it's hard. It's hard when you've gone this far. Uh, amazing details. Thanks, Izzy. Uh, Izzy. You can sing Earthworm Diet like Zoot Zoot Riot. <laughs> Earthworm Diet. Diet. Throw back a bottle of grubs. Sierra. Nerf, uh, Sierra. Sierra Neve. Sierra Neve. Thanks for the follow. I used to actually, um, don't judge me. I used to sing karaoke back in the day. And Zoot Suit Riot was actually one of my um, go-tos. It was, it, was, uh, it was well within my vocal range. And so I uh, would sing that one. And I loved uh, Cherry Pop and Daddies. Is it Cherry Pop and Daddies or was it? No, that was... Um, that was not Cherry Pop and Daddy's. That was... Uh, I, I even saw them in concert. I can't, I can't think of their name. Uh, amazing work. Thanks, uh, Sierra. Um, it was... It's the guys who did the... Uh, that were on the mask. That wasn't Cherry Pop and Daddy's. Right? It was... Um, Who did the, uh, no, not Squirrel Nut Zippers, no. I forgot the last time I've done karaoke. Okay, so the guys I'm talking, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, that's what it was. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy did the, uh, did the, uh, s the stuff for the mask. They did that, um, uh, gin and totter sounds mighty, mighty good to me. Man, you know I've got to go. It's the same thing every time. But I don't think another drink's going to make me lose my mind. So I think about my next drink. I saw those guys in concert, and they were freaking amazing. I saw them uh, twice in concert, um, either the same day or or one day back. It was one day and then the next. I think it was the same day. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. So there was a... Uh, there was a festival, it was called the Big Ass, what was it called? It was like, it was, it was, I remember it was called the Big Ass something, like the Big Ass Rock Festival or something. And it had a bunch of big name bands. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy was in there. And Primus was one of them. Oh my God, Primus. It was so amazing watching Primus. Man, that was amazing. I think it was just called the Big Ass Show. Anyway, um... And then my friends and I went to a club that night, and uh, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy was the band at the club, and it was so incredible. So they did a set on the stage with a billion other musicians. You know, they only played like maybe four songs, but we got to go and see them live and uh, experience that. And I was absolutely like in love because I was already into their music. But after that, it was like all about them. Even though I couldn't remember their name just now. You and the bottle and me. It's you and me and the bottle makes three tonight. Yep. Man, you know I gotta go. 
with the same thing every time. But I don't think another drink's gonna make me lose my mind. Boom, boom, boom. I do like the squirrel nut zippers, though, for sure. Those guys are awesome. I love, there's a video that the squirrel nut zippers did that I freaking loved. Prima sucks. Yep. There was a guy there, Dig, uh, that, that was standing next to me and he started chanting Prima sucks. And I was like, I'm going to hit this guy. I didn't know that that was like a thing. But now I get it. I don't know where it started, but I know that's a thing. Do you know the whole uh, etymology of that Primus sucks? But man, less Claypool. That guy was so entertaining to watch. Yeah, exactly. He would play and then he would look off. He would look off to the left. It was so freaking amazing. Uh, I can't tell what it is to Amoeba Wisdom King. It's a, it's a, it's quite random. Uh, here you go. And thank you, by the way. Um, it's just uh, here. I'm going to show you guys that are new in here what like where it started it was it started from a tea stain um i'm actually quite happy with where it is right now i think i'm going to stop or very very close to stop so this is the tea stain um yeah that's their ironic thing don't know the origin nope so yeah i just um i took this and i drew that um here's some bug pictures yeah so this is my this is my start of it or at least you know early on and then i added this thing on top and so i just kind of went around and uh yeah and so now it's where it is just come from a tea stain no plan it's rendered joy Yes. Um, I think you draw a lot of belts and costumes, and you just drew those on memory on top of the stain. Yeah, partially immovable. Like I definitely, um, I I definitely have my crutches that I kind of fall back on. Uh, the buckles and things, buckles and belts are relatively simple things to draw. And they kind of look cool, and so they fill space easily. So they're kind of a they're they're my they're one of my artistic cheats for sure. Um, but uh, what the hell, you know, who can say like maybe that's just the ticket? But you have, uh, but I I actually when I think about belts and buckles, I think about like the the '90s when everybody was drawing belts and buckles on everybody, like in comics. Rob Liefeld, he would just like load, he would load a character up with, with belts and buckles, like all like along their arms, all along their legs and on their torso, like, you know, they didn't have belts and buckles on their heads, like sometimes. <laughs> Rob Liefeld cannot draw feet, he can't draw any, like there's a lot of stuff he can't draw, but holy crap, has that guy become successful? He's kind of like proof of you stick with it, you'll be successful. He 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 works hard, but he, he doesn't correct himself. It's hard to look at his art for me, especially oh my god, especially when he started drawing Lobo. Lobo made fun of Liefeld. It was so funny, like the Simon Bisley days of Lobo, which were the best days. I walked into a comic book shop and I saw a cover. I'm like, what the hell is this? That looks like Liefeld drew Lobo and gave him like, uh, gave him like uh, a fashionable haircut. That looks, you know, like a metrosexual haircut. And um, I opened up, looked at the credits, and it was Liefeld. And I'm like, I can't believe Liefeld is drawing Lobo. Liefeld ripped off Lobo hard. Um, he, he ripped him off uh, with a character he did called, um, I can't think of the name of it. 
it didn't it did not take but um he straight up ripped off lobo he he had a he had a space hog he had like a pet dog uh all kinds of stupid stuff anyway i was so so mad about that and then uh when I saw that Liefeld did Lobo, I'm like, okay, that that's it. You ruined. It's like it's like ruining Christmas for you, kind of a thing. I did hear something that he draws underwear and then adds th thing from there. I'll always love Lobo. Remember those Lobos back comics in the '90s, dude? Of course I remember. Hang on a second, Gobble. Hang on a second. Be right back. Wolf, yes. Oh my god, Blood Wolf. Zooming back. Zooming back. If you look here, this is on my lap. Some comic books. So, uh, what do we have here? Let me get it start from what side? Oh, there's a Lady Death in here. Um, this is this is almost all Lobo. Hey, there's my hairy legs. Well, kind of. Not really. Oh yeah, I turned it around the wrong way. Uh, yeah, but like... Like, it's all Lobo. Patricide, oh my god, patricide. Yeah, I was I was collecting them when they were the, the little mini series. Do you remember the para the paramilitary Christmas special? It was so freaking funny, dude. Um, hang on a second, it's like Monster. I haven't looked through this for ages. Man, this is so old that the plastic is actually um, coming apart. Basically, I collected, I used to collect anything that Lobo was in. This is just a, this is just a Bisley cover. I was a huge Bisley fan. I, I am a huge Bisley fan. But, like, my favorite one. Uh, dude, I gotta. Yeah, so Legion, um, Legion had Lobo in it. See, there he is in the background. Um, did you ever see the Lobo versus Superman one? Legion, 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 Legion. I have a lot of Legion in here. Demon. Uh, I'm going back to Lobo. Come on, where's Lobo? I'm not very organized, man. Like, these... Oh, here it is. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this is so good. Here, actually, let me just keep it at the drawing. Fight, 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 fight. This one actually has, um, it has stickers and stuff. Like, so you can actually put Lobo and Superman in different, um, poses of fighting. It was so freaking hilarious. Um, and I probably have duplicates of of most of these. Dude, this is too cram packed. I need to like I need to get rid of some of these. Ah, not that many. I need to get rid of non-lobo stuffs. 
<laughs> love Low Spade. I just grabbed a handful. But yeah, I love me some Lobo, man. Uh, what's this? A swimsuit. A swimsuit special. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Samari. Remember that stupid cover. Evangeline. Oh my god, look how sexy. Just kidding. Lobo and Pulverine. Dude, I love this guy's art. I have to look up who this is because this is one of the funniest freaking comics. I have, I'll have to reread all these. Uh, crap. Uh, crap. Oh my gosh. I'm actually going to throw away some of these. Evangeline? There's no way that's staying. Maybe it oh, actually does have Lobo in it. Maybe I have to keep it. Lobo, Batman with Sam Keith. You guys don't care. Uh, in the chair. Lobo Cop, the bastard of law enforcement. <laughs> Dude, everybody should come over to my house and we'll have a big Lobo Reed fest. I care. Portrait of a Victim. Have you seen this one? The Portrait of a Victim? Oh my god, hang on a second. Let me show you. It's so funny because it's done from the perspective of one of his victims. And you feel so bad because it's like, uh, you know, he's always he's always beating the hell out of some dude. And so see this guy in the foreground? There's a, a Glenn Fabry painting on the front cover. Uh, so it's just basically a, uh, a story from his perspective. It's like he's in the hospital and it starts telling his story. And he's like this innocent bystander. At first he's kind of giving attitude and then he gets his butt kicked. And it just, it, he just, it keeps happening over and over again. He just, he starts trying to avoid Lobo and he just starts getting his butt kicked. But look at him like, this is him telling a story and his lips are all sticking out. <laughs> look at his lips and his teeth. <laughs> he looks amazing. See, this is where a lot of my style comes from. I'm telling you right now. The Max, yeah, yeah, I got the Max. But yeah, it's an awesome story. But uh, let me, I'm digressing too much. I want to... I want to get back. Nobody's has anybody said anything about the uh, paramilitary Christmas special? That one is my um, that one is my go-to favorite. Actually, that one um, they even did a they did a movie on Omega Men. This is where Lobo first appeared. Uh, this is number ten. Lobo first appeared in Omega Men number nine, which I don't know why it's not in order. Doom Patrol. I love the artwork. Simon Bisley's artwork is so good. He did a drawing for me, Simon Bisley. Uh, there's another Omega Man. Sorry, I'm trying to get to uh, this one issue. I'm going to hurry up and get that, and then I'll show it to you. For you guys who don't know Lobo, there's a, the paramilitary Christmas special. Is The Easter Bunny is jealous of Santa Claus, and so the Easter Bunny hires Lobo, who is a bounty hunter, to kill Santa Claus. And Lobo... Lobo is like, what the heck, man? Uh, he never brought me anything. And so he actually takes on the... Uh, what's this? Kevin Eastman, Simon Bisley, Project X. I'll have to like, look that back up. It looks like it's awesome. I need to I need to get all these out and dust them off because like, there's like a kind of dustiness that's on my fingers right now from handling these old things. Come on, come on, where are you? I'm not going to keep this up for too long, don't worry. Yeah, look at it, 20 people just left. It's like, yep, lost him. Dude, this one though, the freaking... Oh my god, these are so good, these old, these old series. Alright, I'm going to stop showing them. So good. Yeah. Okay, so you get, you remember this one? The Last Cesarnian? Um This is where... That's his third grade school teacher. He accepts a job. So this... No, that's number four. So here's number three. No, that's one of four. What the hell kind of organization? 
One of four. That's two of four. Verse three. Three of four. Okay, good. So, um, so he's hired. He's hired um, to safely transport a client from one planet to another, and he has to protect the client. And so he's a man of his word. So as soon as he agrees to something, he will not back down from it. So they get him to agree to do this thing. And he said, so you're going to do it, right? And he goes, yeah, I said, I'll do it. He's like, you promise? He's like, I just said I'll freaking do it. And he goes, okay, that's three times you said you'll do it. And then they showed him his client. And then he immediately was like, no. And it was his third grade school teacher. And he totally wanted to kill her so bad. Um, she, It's called the Last Zarnian because... Uh, he killed everybody on his planet so he could be unique. And he uh, he hated her most of all. She wrote she wrote an autobiography about him. Oh, sorry, she wrote a biography about him. Uh, and he, he hated her so much for it. So anyway, um, it's the this this mini series, this these uh, this run of four is their experience from him getting the job to him transporting her and having to like fight off everybody trying to kill her. Um, and at one point she tries to get away, so he doesn't kill her, but he cuts off her legs. <laughs> so she doesn't have legs. <laughs> yeah, Lobo's amazing. Uh, I love Lobo. All right, that's enough show and tell for Lobo. I can't find, uh, oh, is this it? Nope. Bounty hunting for fun and profit. He's so good. Yeah, oh man. Omega Man, this is it. This is where his first this is where he first appeared. That's the first uh ever appearance of Lobo. Oh, it's number three, it's not number nine. Yeah, so can you tell him um, and this is Lobo's back. Uh this is uh the mini series where he gets killed and then um it's that classic like hell like he's taking over hell and so they get rid of him and so heaven takes him in and then he basically he creates too big of a ruckus at heaven so they just give up and they decide to reincarnate him and so he keeps coming back and they keep they keep putting him back wrong so like this is him returning he comes back as a woman uh and then there's other ones where he comes back as a squirrel uh it's so freaking funny. Well, these are super out of order. Yeah, Lobo is the best. All right. I'll have to find the other one because uh, I bet I just grabbed it in this stack. So there's Superman versus Lobo. Come on. What? Maybe it's in here. Did I go through all these already? Oh, yeah, here's the Superman one that has the uh, stickers on it. See the fight? And you look on the back, and it's all of the different... You can have Superman Lobo fight. See, so you get to pose them together. Amazing. I need to go through here and get rid of some of this stuff. Even if it's collector stuff, I don't need it, like if it's not Lobo. Alright, I'm putting this back in here. I'm not going to worry about finding this paramilitary Christmas special. It's funny enough, that, like, you can find it, read it, it's incredible. Easter Bunny hires Lobo to kill Santa Claus. And it's one of the best things ever. But yeah, they, they did, um... There's a live action of that comic it was it was so uh it was so well received that they actually did a live um thing and they it was it was it was a pretty decent budget but um it was like british television man the plastic's like falling apart in my lap my lap is all a mess Anyway, show and tell over. 
Mega Man 3 is worth a few hundred dollars. It is? I didn't realize that. I think I have three of them. That's kind of awesome. I found out that uh, that was when he first appeared, and I and I went ahead and I bought like three of them. I might have given one of them away, but I know that I have at least two. That's pretty cool. Oh man. So uh, I think my brain's fried. When I, I, I lost my momentum going into the Lobo, uh, plus my hands are all sticky from, or like messy, dirty from handling those old comics that I haven't accessed for a while, and it's collected dust over the years. So I'm going to um, end this, and I'm going to probably either post it tonight on social media, on Instagram, or probably soon. Actually, I'm going to fix some things up in here. But I'm done working on this guy. Let's go raid somebody. There's enough people in here where um, someone will be uh, happy that they got some some peeps. If you guys don't mind uh, hanging around just for a minute. Uh, I'll just see if there's one of my favorites uh, out there. Okay, so here's a guy you guys will like. Um, his name is Lanny Ho. And he is an awesome um, artist, and he does uh, wood cutting, which is he's doing now. He does lino cut, he does tattoo design, and he is he's a very very strong artist, like super good stuff. Uh, thanks a lot, Candy. I appreciate it, bud. Guys, um, thanks a lot for hanging out. Hopefully, this guy isn't signing off, but. Um, What the hell? All right. Let's go say hi to him. Bye. Oh, wait. That was wrong. Lay raid. I got to do that. And then I have to wait for the 10 second thing. But yeah, good night, guys. Oh, wait. No, no. He's, he's leaving. He's leaving. We can't go to him. I'm glad I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to him. That's so funny. He's totally signing off. He's an, but uh, check him out though sometime. Really, really good stuff. Uh, who else? Cozy, Cozy Heart's on. Let's find somebody else. Uh, White Starflower, thanks for the follow. Man, that was close. He was totally signing off. Cat videos. Uh, I would throw you at cat videos, but, um, there might be people who would be super offended by her banter. Um, dude, who else is on? Cozy Art. The Motanius. Sephardic Seraph. Crush Builds. You guys are going to bail on me. Um, I'm going to throw you at a guy who does a lot of really awesome details. And then you guys, you can hang around if you want. It's 3D. So, but I think he'll, uh, he'll super appreciate the raid. Sorry, guys, for the uh, confusion. Oh, Cody Shibby? Where's Cody? Is Cody Shibby on? Yeah, let me, let's go to somebody you know. Look, that's two false alarms. Cody Shibby. I know that. Cody... Uh, sh I got it wrong. Cody Shibby. 
Yeah, he, he's on, okay. How am I? I know that name. I can't believe I'm not following. Professional Twitch streamer. That's me, man. I don't know why I'm not following him. I wonder if uh, some somehow I unfollowed. Good night, Bearmanator. Bye, guys. Thanks for the raid, Mike. What'd you do? Share some of your art. Put a link in. Put a link in there, buddy. Do it. I mean, I don't like to boss people around, but fucking do it. Cody says middle, middle does. If you say so. Cody says so. Cody says so. The movie Graveyard Shift was a half bat, half rat monster. Hell yeah. It's not up to date, but okay, let's check it out. I'm going to share some of this. Is this okay? Guys, I like to do this with Raiders. Oh, damn, look at this one. Dude. All teeth, baby. Oh, look at that one. This is all, what did you do this in? Is this Procreate? What are we working on here? Nearly done with it, uh, like super close. Yeah. Dude, I love this. Oh, I like that close up, look at that. <laughs> That's pencil on tea stain. Get the fuck out of here, Mike May. What do you call something that goes around the teapot? Dude, I love that abstract piece right there. I can stare at that for hours. I'll probably find the secret of the universe right in there. Dude, guys, follow Mike May. You may just like it. <laughs> oh my god, what's that behind? Desmarie. Oh, Yeah, Charles is here too. We got the crew here. I appreciate that. Guys, if you want, uh, they're listening. Oh my God, what's that behind? You want to see more of my art right oh, there? You can geez. if you want. You don't have to. Do Nero. Thank you for following. You guys can check out my art there, or you guys can just chillax, and we're just going to be drawing all night long. We're going to be, well, we're making, we're making three monsters tonight, guys. Three monsters. So right now, these are our key words. Draw your monster, hypnotize, skull, bat, slobber. Your monster's just gonna have that. I'm gonna put some like things on the back. Something like that. Ah, the perspective on that's kind of fucked up. That's okay. So this is just a fun exercise. We do this every Tuesday, but I moved it to Thursday. Uh, I'm sorry. What's today? Wednesday. Because I took Monday off. Um, so please, guys, please come and just hang out with us every Tuesday. Come every time. Every time we stream. <laughs> if you want. Got an iPad yesterday for Procreate. Can't get off. Garage band. Oh. <laughs> Middle art. I like it. Yeah, you're a music guy. You're a music guy. Super close to being done. Cody's monster reminds me of Krampus. Really? This reminds you of Krampus? Interesting. Oh my god, what's that behind? behind? Oh, Marcello Simonetti. How you doing? Great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. You guys are you guys are amazing. Seriously. 
can't go this way. This, this monster is kind of weird. That's why I like, guys, I've told you before, that's why I like drawing monsters. Because I do not have to be anatomically correct. Like, why is this b fucking things like here on his back? That's how they eat the monster. That's how it grows. Why is this, this arm a lot more bigger than the other arm? This is a damn monster. That's the way his uh, monster species is, is grown. It's just my way of just being able to just fuck up whenever I want and saying, hey, that's how, that's how it was supposed to be. So please, guys, follow my lead. Follow my damn lead. Alrighty. We have blabbed about our, lo our local lingo. Can you teach us some Austin native tongue? I mean, I put a koozie on my beer. I mean, I don't know. I don't any Austin. Ling I don't know any Austin lingo. It would be, I guess it would just be Texas lingo. I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably just end up saying something. Remember, and then you guys will just be. Be, uh, you'll point it out and go, wait, what'd you say? I said y'all. This guy's got a big bulge, by the way. We're giving him a bulge, because that's the way... That's the way these monsters are made. What the hell is this? Zombie Bacons. This is a good first monster. I always, I'm always interested to see what first monster it is that we warm up with. This is a good one. This is a damn good one. Everything I say is Austin lingo. Hey, that's funny. His name's Austin, guys. His name. His name's Austin. That's why it's funny. So Mike May, 